Genital herpes. What's the treatment for genital herpes? How can I prevent it being spread to my partner? What are the complications if I become pregnant? These are all the questions we answer on My Health Spots. Hello, my name is Dr. Jorge Sanchez, Family Medicine Board for Certified Physician. Hey, be sure to go to my last video when we talk about the symptoms. Today we're going to talk about the diagnosis and treatment of herpes. So how is herpes diagnosed? Before going on to the diagnosis of herpes, it's important to understand how our immune system fights off infection. Whenever a bacteria or virus enters into our circulation, the white blood cells will attack the infection by engulfing it, and in a similar way to digestion, will actually break the virus apart. During the recovery process, the body produces what's called antibodies that look like molecules that have the shape of a fork, that have two little prongs, that will continuously survey the circulation. So if the virus or bacteria tries to make a comeback, then antibodies will attach itself with the two little prongs onto the virus or bacteria and mark it for destruction and will either prevent symptoms from developing or minimizing them greatly. These antibodies can be measured in the lab by what is called immune assays or serological tests and if positive, may not indicate necessarily active infection but rather more of an exposure to infection. After an infection can be tested by measuring a genetic material in the virus known as DNA. The best way to check for DNA of herpes virus is by using PCR known as polymerase chain reaction testing. Whew, that's a long word. PCR will take a handful of copies and multiply them greatly and make them very easily detectable in the lab. So in summary, antibodies are measured by serological testing to indicate exposure and DNA is measured by PCR to determine if currently having an ongoing infection. So they're both good together. Now, genital blisters should be confirmed in the laboratory because other things can mimic the infection. Now, the type of testing that is done really depends off if, if the ulcer went away, if the ulcer is still there. Now, if the ulcer is not there, then you can do serolo serological testing that will show the presence of an antibody and determine whether you've been exposed to the virus. Now, a very common difficult situation occurs when there, when there was a rash on the penis or the vagina, but by the time that the person went to the doctor to get tested for the ulcer, the ulcer went away. Now, if the test was positive for type 2 herpes, in that situation, then you can fairly be certain that the ulcer was probably due to genital herpes, but the situation that is very difficult to do uh, to figure out what's going on is when you're positive for type 1. Now, remember that type 1 can cause cold sores as well as genital herpes, and it's very difficult that if the test was positive, it's, we don't know whether uh, it, it came from cold sores or genital ulcer. We just know it was positive. So it's very difficult in that situation. Now, the ideal situation is when there are, when there are symptoms, when there's blisters and when there's ulcers, and you come to the doctor early, then you get that tested, and testing is really more straightforward. The doctor can do genetic testing on the blister or ulcer and verify active infection. This will require unroofing of the blister with a small sharp device, don't worry, it doesn't hurt, and genetic testing with the viral PCR can determine whether the blister or ulcer is from type 1 or type 2. Or type two. If it's positive for the, for the PCR, then you can know for sure that you have genital herpes. Now, I recommend, in addition to doing viral PCR by, uh, on the blister, also doing serological tests to determine if the infection was either, either a first outbreak or a recurrent outbreak. If the antibody test was negative with a positive PCR, then this will generally be a first outbreak. If the antibody test was positive with a positive PCR, then this will typically be more of a recurrent outbreak. Again, it's very difficult to determine exactly when you have the infection and when you acquired it, as antibodies will actually be tested uh, from exposure that occurred weeks, months, and even years ago. Now, should I get tested if uh, I do not have any symptoms? The general answer is no, that you should not get tested if you do not have any symptoms or if you've ne uh, particularly if you've never had symptoms. The reason is that the test is actually more inaccurate in those who do not have any symptoms. You could potentially have a situation where you have a false positive, meaning the test was positive but you truly do not have the illness. For this reason, I recommend that those who have never had an ulcer before not get tested or if they never had blisters either. How is herpes transmitted? Great question. Herpes typically is transmitted by vaginal sex, but can be transmitted by anal sex as well as oral sex. Now, oral sex is the main way that type 1 is transmitted, known as cold sores or, or fever blisters. Now, if somebody has oral sex on their partner and they have cold sores, it can be spread genitally to their partner. Transmission from person to person can occur even if there are no visible ulcers or no symptoms. 
Now, having said that, uh, do not blame toilet seats or public restrooms as that's not the way that you acquired herpes and that's not how it spread at all. This is also the case with doorknobs, utensils, bed sheets, and the list goes on. The risk is acquired um, uh, of acquiring gelatin herpes does increase with the increased number of sexual partners and how inc infrequent somebody uses condoms. Now, in, in those who have genital herpes, it's very important to check for HIV because the ulcer can make it easier for the HIV virus to enter into the body. What are the complications of herpes if I become pregnant? Complications from herpes during pregnancy can be potentially very serious. If there are any symptoms, which includes burning or itching that occurs before an ulcer occurs, or if there's active ulcer at all during delivery, it can be transmitted to the baby through the birth canal. The virus is acquired through the nose and into the mouth and can be transmitted all the way up to the brain, causing very serious complications, which includes meningitis and the baby, and also seizures, long-term brain damage, or even potentially death. The riskiest situation occurs when the first outbreak develops during labor, and this is when someone is the most infectious and most likely to spread the virus. Recurrent gelatin herpes can cause transmission to the baby, but with good planning and medications can greatly reduce the risk of transmission. If there are any outbreaks during the labor process, a cesarean is performed to prevent transmission. Now, there are good recommendations for women who are pregnant so that this situation can be avoided altogether. One thing that pregnant women can do is that basically if their sexual partner has ever had herpes and the woman, uh, woman has never had herpes, uh, during the entire pregnancy, they should use condoms. During the last trimester, it's important to avoid oral sex, vaginal sex, and anal sex to prevent transmission. Also, do not let your partner perform oral sex on you if your partner has ever had oral herpes, known as cold sores and fever blisters. Now, if you do not know if your partner has gentle herpes, they may want to ask and, and, and wish your partner to be tested. If your partner is tested positive and you've never had the virus, then your partner could be placed on medications to prevent spread of the infection altogether. Now, taking daily medication is not a guarantee that you won't get the virus, but it greatly reduces the risk. So it's still important to practice safe sex, which includes condoms and avoiding sex altogether during the last trimester. I know it's really hard to do, but it's worth it. What are the treatments of genital herpes? Before talking about the treatments, just understand that genital herpes really is a lifelong condition that you will have to deal with with the rest of your life. But there are good medications available that can help manage herpes well. There are three medications for herpes, which includes acyclovir, famcyclovir, and also valcyclovir, known as Valtrex. Acyclovir has been around forever. It's the oldest medication. It's cheap. It does require about five times a day dosing, whereas Valtrex, it's a little more expensive, but usually it's easier to take once or twice a day. The initial outbreak does take about seven to 10 days of medication to help with the symptoms. The treatment of recurrent outbreaks does not limit the number of outbreaks per year, but rather how long each individual outbreak lasts. It also will reduce the severity and, how, and also reduce the length of illness by a few days. It is important to take these medications as soon as you notice outbreaks and typically within the first 72 hours. Well, there are a few situ situations where you might want to consider taking medications daily known as suppressive therapy. Suppressive therapy does reduce the number of times somebody gets an outbreak per year as well as how long each outbreak lasts. This is particularly helpful for those who have frequent outbreaks, usually about more than six times per year, and also if the outbreaks are very, very severe. Taking daily suppressive therapy can reduce the risk of transmission of the virus to an uninfected sexual partner by at least 50%. It is important to have your partner tested and if the labs were negative for the antibody, then, then taking daily medications in the infected individual may actually be very helpful. It is also recommended to take daily medications for herpes if you have HIV. Now, since the number of outbreaks normally decreases over time, it's worth it to try stopping the suppressive therapy medications every few years to see whether you have an outbreak and to see if you still need the medication. Now, if your outbreaks are infrequent and, you're, and they're mild and you're not sexually active, then suppressive therapy is not necessary. Now, now there are some self-care measures that you can do to reduce the symptoms, which includes sitting in a few inches of cool water known as a sits bath in the bathtub. It feels great. If you're having difficulty urinating, then try urinating in a sits bath or then at the end of a warm shower. Try to avoid soaps or bubble baths as these can be very irritating and also keep the genital area clean and dry. Try to avoid tight or irritating underwear or clothing. You can also use Tonal or Ibuprofen for controlling pain. So how can genital herpes be prevented? 
So now, I know that's very difficult to do, but it's very important to tell your sexual partner that you have genital herpes. By telling them this, then certain measures can be made to prevent the spread of the virus. It's very important to use condoms every single time you have sex, even when there are no ulcers or blisters present because you can, be, you can spread the illness even without symptoms. Sex should be avoided anytime genital ulcers are present. Also, oral sex should be avoided if there are any ulcers or blisters around the mouth. Now, as a final note, understand that people with herpes may have a very normal and romantic sexual relationship. After diagnosis, you may feel like your life is never the same, but you will feel better soon. There are countless online communities and support groups that are available and advice from those who have been in your shoes before. In the description below, I've included websites and such information. Well, that's all the time that we have today. Be sure to come next week when we talk about HIV. What are the symptoms? How is it diagnosed? And if you want to support My Health Spot, be sure to support A Cause. Unbound Now is a great organization that seeks to end sex slavery and human trafficking. Be sure to go to the website that I've included in the description and become more educated on the topic. Find out where your local chapter is and be sure to give and that because that makes a great difference. Be sure also to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. And thanks for coming. I'll see you next week.